Well, I guess we can go ahead and get started. Maybe a couple stragglers coming in. But uh, yeah, first of all, thanks for coming to my talk, Training Day. Um, my name's Cameron Campbell. Yes, that is the same shirt. I work from home. I don't, I don't need to have that many shirts, honestly. <laughs> That's the great thing of working from home. Uh, so yeah, I am a front-end developer and designer at Web Dev Studios. Uh, I get to work with some cool clients like Microsoft and NBC and Discovery Channel. And prior to that, I was a freelancer for a couple of years, uh, just locally in the Nashville area, and worked at a couple different agencies. And uh, I even started a little agency with a friend of mine that lasted like a year, and then we realized that running a business was hard. So we kind of, we were like, okay, let's go get jobs. So um, that's kind of, that's, that's what I'm doing now. Um, I go to a lot of word camps just all over the place. I read a lot of blogs, follow people on Twitter. And I see, you know, we're talking about all kinds of cool stuff like SAS and Grunt and plugins and themes, and there's all kinds of cool stuff to talk about. But I haven't seen a lot of people talking about uh, client training or client handoff. And it's interesting because in our industry, like, we're so good about, like, like here's how I, like, design a Photoshop comp, or here's how I code a function. We're really open with our processes in that regard, but I, I don't see too many people saying like, this is how I train clients, uh, or this is kind of my business process. So I'm hoping to maybe like open that discussion up a little bit, and that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm just gonna like take you through my process, and hopefully you can kind of uh, just adapt it into your own workflow. I mean, you don't have to do everything I say. Um, you can pick and choose, hopefully, and, and, and just come out with uh, hopefully better prepared clients, um, and, and kind of having a better relationship with your clients. So uh, without further ado, I guess we'll go ahead and jump right in. Um, and actually, I'm gonna do something weird first. I'm gonna have everybody like close their eyes. I'm actually like legit, like close your eyes for me. Play, play along, no, play along, play along. This is actually just to help me. I'm, I'm gonna do the whole talk with your eyes closed. Um, this is my first talk, I'm nervous. No, I, I actually want to, I wanna paint a mental picture for everybody, okay? And it's a scenario I think we've all been in. So you just finished a, a project up, okay? You were on this project for four months. The, the, the site, you just launched it, it's killer, it looks great, it checks off everything on the, uh, the client's uh, wish list. It just generally was like a really awesome project. And you're going to the wedge, and you're celebrating, you're having drinks, you're hanging out with friends, and you're like, all right, time to get on the next project. So you, you go in the next week and you start on your next project and you're like, you're focused in on it and you're just kind of chugging away, making progress on it. And out of the blue, you get a call or a text or email or carrier pigeon or fax from the previous client. And they're saying, I forgot how to make a post or I forgot how to do the widget thing you showed me or my, sky, my site is just a white screen now. Uh, can you fix that for me? So uh, thanks, for, thanks for playing along with me and being good sports. You can open your eyes. Um, how, like, show of hands, how many have like, experienced that where you finish a project and then like, sometime later the client is like, hey, I need help with something or I forgot to do something? So a good many people. That happened to me a lot. And I, I eventually realized it was because I really didn't have a good client handoff process or client training process. It was mostly like build the site at the end of the project show them how to do a couple things and then like send them on their way. So it wasn't surprising that, uh, you know, a non-techie, non-WordPress person, uh, you know, they get this big new site and they're, they're unsure of how to, how to work it. So that's, that's kind of the root of, of those problems that were coming up for me. So I, I kind of like through trial and error developed my own little process for client handoff and client training. And uh, basically my idea is to uh, teach the client how to fish instead of giving them a fish. So it's like the old adage of, you know, if you can feed a man for a day, if you give him a fish, you can feed him for a lifetime if you show him how to fish. So what I try to do with my clients now is educate them early on and give them a good uh, fundamental of, uh, you know, understanding WordPress and how it works so that they're not coming back to me in a month or two months and they have all these questions and problems. Because you'll find that as your business grows and it, you know, scales up and you have more clients, you're gonna get more of those calls and emails and those can take up a lot of time. And uh, you know, not only your time, but the client's time. And that can be kind of frustrating from their end. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump into the first part of my process, which is just giving the client a tour of the dashboard. So, so introducing them to WordPress. 
And the way I do this, uh, I have an onboarding process for clients. And basically I have like some PDFs that are like, hey, here's my process, here's my timeline, include a little info on my pricing. And I give that to clients. And in addition to that stuff, I also provide a little, little video I made. It's a little screencast. And it is a reusable screencast because it's, it's literally just like I'm giving them a quick tour of the dashboard and I'm showing them some concepts like this is a plugin, this is a widget, this is how menus work. And it's just like five minutes long, but it's something that I have clients check out before I actually have a talk with them so that I don't have to explain a lot of this stuff to them. Um, it's, it allows me to go a little more in depth with, with some WordPress talks and it also, um, kind of gets around that whole topic of, uh, you know, is WordPress right for me? Uh, so, you know, th they're checking out this video and they can see like the power of WordPress and they can see all the stuff that it can do. So that, that kind of negates that whole question coming up. And so, yeah, we're going to be making a lot of screencasts, so I hope you're not afraid of doing that. That's kind of like a big part of uh, my process is just doing a lot of screencasts for my clients. Um, but don't be too afraid because they're all like really reusable. Like you put in a little bit of time making them up front, but it's something that you can reuse over and over. Um, you may have to like update it every like now and then. Like now we're moving a lot of stuff in WordPress into the customizer. So like you may want to take your widget video and your menu video and just do like a customizer video. But for the most part, like I haven't had to update any of these videos. So the, so the very first, uh, well, you know, the next step really is just to start really educating the client. And I found that this is a really good step because clients, and especially a lot of my clients are not super technical. Um, they're, you know, maybe this is their first time like using a WordPress site. So just giving them the education, like sending them that video before you start uh, the project off and uh, just giving them kind of an introduction to WordPress really helps. And I've, I've found that uh, in talking with clients and uh, volunteering on like the WordPress support forums, I've, I've seen a lot of clients say, you know, I don't really know how to use WordPress. I'm like just, I'm new to this or my, you know, the developer didn't train me on it. So I'll go to like the forums or a tutorial site and I'll try to figure out how to work my problem through. And what I've had a lot of people tell me is like, they, they, you know, the answer they get is like step one and then like blah, 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 blah. They don't understand any of the middle stuff and then your problem's fixed. So it kind of like reminds me of this uh, little SpongeBob cartoon where he's like, voila, it's done. So that's what, that's what, that's what clients tell me and I'm like, that makes a lot of sense. So, so yeah, so that's where this whole education thing comes in, like educate them ahead of time and they won't like hopefully run into that problem. So the very first thing that I start talking to them about is hosting. And I really, 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 really try to like convince them to get on a good host and not a bad host. And what do I mean by a bad host? No, they're not like bad guys and villains, but I mean like shared hosting plans that are generally like really cheap and there's gonna be like subpar support, more security risks. Uh, you're not gonna have as good of an uptime as you will with a better host. So I really try to like convince the client to get on something like uh, WP Engine as opposed to HostGator or GoDaddy. And the, the reason that I do that is because uh, w what we're trying to do here is set the client up with a, a culture of like self-learning and independence. Like we want to stay in contact with them. We don't, we don't just want to like throw them to the wolves and be like, I never want to hear from you again. We, we do want to stay in touch with them, but we don't want to like solve every little problem for them after the project's done because we're not getting paid for that anymore. So it doesn't make a whole lot of sense from a business model. So uh, what we do is we, we try to educate them. And the hosting issue, uh, I, started, I started talking to them about hosting because I had some clients that were, you know, they're on like a really bad hosting plan. Like one was on like lowesthosting.com or cheap hosting or something. It was like really terrible. And the support was just like so bad. Like they, they would tell me like they would wait on the phone for like two hours and give up and try to send an email and they would never get a response. And I was like, man, I'm trying to do this new process of like teaching them how to learn for themselves and do for themselves, but their host sucks so bad that like they're running into these walls and it's kind of like counterproductive to what I'm trying to do. So I said, why don't I just like, you know, skirt around that issue and get them on a good host. And uh, 
you know, don't make it about the, the money. Like if you just, uh, if you just talk to them about like, well, GoDaddy's $5 and you know, Media Temple's $30. They're gonna go with GoDaddy every time. So don't make it about the money. Like if you have to tell a horror story, like, yeah, I was on HostGator support for 10 hours and I missed the birth of my first child. <laughs> like do it, like, like do it. Like, uh, you know, convince them to get off of the bad host and get on a good host because it's gonna help you um, in the long run. And that kind of gives you a good segue into talking about like WordPress security because that's that's a big issue when you hand off a, a site to a client and you know they're, the concept of like securing a site is going to be kind of new to them. So what I found where a lot of clients get into trouble is plugins. So I kind of like touch on that a little more and uh, basically I go through and say, look, don't go to some random dude's website and download a plugin. Just go to the WordPress repository. That's where you should get all your plugins. And then I teach them how to evaluate a good plugin. So I say, you know, when was it last updated? What's the star rating? Is it compatible with your version of WordPress? It tells you all of that on the WordPress, uh, you know, in the repository when you're looking at a plugin. So I teach them to evaluate those things. And then they're not gonna run into as many issues where like they install a plugin that hasn't been updated in three years and they get like malware on their site. So, we're trying to avoid those kinds of problems so that they don't have to call us and say, you know, my site's broken. Um, you want to definitely make sure that you're, you're really telling the client to update their plugins and themes um, because I've had so many clients come to me where they, you know, maybe they were at a smaller agency or something else and they're like, yeah, I didn't know I was supposed to update this stuff and now like all the links on my site are going to some pharmaceutical website. Like I can't tell you how many times that's happened to me. So like really just try to drive home the importance of updating plugins, updating themes, and even you know, having some backups. Uh, you know, if they want to buy a plugin like Backup Buddy and just have scheduled backups. But just make sure that they understand the, the risks and, uh, of not doing that and just try to you know, kind of enforce that idea. So the next step, and this is like the most crucial one for me, like if you don't do anything else I say, like try this out at least. Uh, get, the, get the client into the dashboard early. So traditionally, um, a lot of us will, will give the client a, uh, login credentials at the end of the project and we'll say, you know, here, log in and you can go to town on your new site. But what I found is um, a lot of times clients are kind of scared of breaking their site because it's like, it's this polished site and you know, it's, you put all this work into it and they're really afraid of like breaking something. So they're not gonna be as confident in trying out like, uh, you know, making a poster page or, you know, installing plugins. So what I do is I get them in the dashboard early and I, I put them, you know, I get a staging site set up with like a fresh install of WordPress. that's just, you know, you know, freshly downloaded. And I, uh, I, I put up whatever starter theme I'm using. So I use underscores, uh, which is made by automatic. And it's like a super, super minimalist, like blank theme that like, I, I just love the theme because there's no styling or anything. It looks really ugly out of the box. And I've had a lot of clients say like, they're not afraid of breaking anything. They're like, what, could I, what else could I break? It, it already looks like crap. So they're not afraid of like going in and breaking. It can be like their little sandbox where they can test out some of the stuff that you're trying to train them on. So what I do is I give them more training videos. Um, so what I did is like I've got about eight videos that I made and they're on topics like making a post, making a page, here's how to go install a plugin and set up a widget, um, you know, things like that. And what I do is like I reuse these from project to project. So I'm not like, yeah, I'm putting a little time up front like creating these videos, but I'm not having to do it for every single project. And I'm not having to retrain the client every time on these uh, things like these basics of WordPress because these are things that are not going to change a lot. So you can kind of make these videos once and then send them to all of your clients and it kind of reduces the, the load of uh, training that you have to do. And so here's like my favorite part of this. I have the client enter the content. I don't like, does anyone here like entering content? I, I really hate it. She does. She's weird. Um, <laughs> I like on the last site that I did, it was like this really, really old organization, like 100 years old, and they had 600 pages on their site. And they did not have any backups of the database, so they lost all of their content. Everything was in like old, like 
what was the thing before Word, like Word Perfect? It was all in Word Perfect documents. So we had 600 pages of content that had to be re entered. There was no backups. If I had to enter all that content myself, like I would have lost like five weeks of the project and probably killed myself. I, so I had the client and their team, like they were entering the content because I had gotten them all these videos and, and it's like, you know, go watch the video on how to make a page and go make a page or go make 600 pages in this case. But it took such a load off of me. Like I was able to actually on this project do more like cross browser testing, more device testing, and I was able to come out with a better product because I didn't have to waste a lot of time entering content. And the best thing is I did not have the, the issue of getting an email where they're like, yeah, we showed it around everybody and we want you to change all the content because there's a, you know, we want to change these paragraphs and you misspelled the president's dog's name and like, just, we just need to start over. Like that didn't happen. So that was like, that's my favorite part of this process. So if, you know, if you don't do anything that I say, like definitely get them in the dashboard and get them entering content and entering their own content. Um, because when it comes time to like actually launch the site, you're like skipping a whole thing there. Like you don't have to like, like build the site and then enter content. It's already there. So you're, you're saving yourself a lot of time. And you're also for the length of this project, like allowing the client to slowly learn WordPress because they're going to be, they're, they're doing like real use cases. They're not like, practicing uploading a, a plugin or making a post. They're actually, you know, they're writing real posts on their site. They're, you know, they go grab a MailChimp plugin and enter their credentials and get a real widget set up. So they're, they're practicing this. And, and imagine like your project is like three months long. They're practicing this for three months. So by the time that you get done with it, they're going to already like have a really firm grasp on WordPress and they're going to be kind of ready to take it to the next level. And so um, you kind of get to the, the final stage, which is client handoff. And this is traditionally where you would, um, you would actually do the training and give, uh, give the client the login credentials and get them set up in WordPress, or at least that's how it worked in a lot of the agencies I was at. But at this point, the client's already been doing all that. So now that you're in, you're in the client handoff phase, you can actually focus on some different things like um, educating them and showing them how to use like custom functionality on the site. Like if you made a little plugin for like showing all their locations on a map, you can show them how to add new, uh, you know, add new locations to the map or, you know, whatever custom functionality you set them up with. And you guessed it, you're going to record it. So the cool thing is here, if you just get yourself like, I don't care if you use QuickTime or Camtasia or whatever, but just record it, like show them on your screen how to do this stuff on it record it and then hand it to them. Like you're not, you're not like recording a video and then training them, you're just recording the session and it's really, you're not causing yourself to do extra work. And they also get, um, you know, a good reference for later on. And um, that's like, I know it's pretty short, but that's literally my process. So it's, it's pretty quick and um, it's easy to integrate in your own process. You just have that time of making the videos up front. Um, so at, at this point, I, I, when I get through explaining this to people, a lot of people are like, that seems like a lot of stuff to do. Like, I, I just want to build websites and make some money from it. So like, why, why do I need to do something this in depth? Um, and I always answer them with a quote from my personal hero, Mike Montero. And he says, you know, if it's something that helps you do your job, um, or if it's, I have to read it because I can't remember anything. Anything that helps you do your job is part of your job. So, you know, if it helps you do your job better and helps you better prepare clients, then that is your job. You should be doing it. And if you're, if you're providing a better service, you should definitely bill for it. So since I, since I started doing a more sophisticated client training process, I started charging a lot more for sites or not a lot more, but you know, definitely enough to cover my time doing it. And, um, because when you think about it, like if you, if you learn JavaScript, and you can provide that skill to clients. Now you're going to say, Hey, I'm actually worth more. So I'm going to charge a little more. What's well, the same with this? You're providing a better, a better training experience and you're better preparing them. So go ahead and build more for it. I have yet to have a client push back. Like when I'm giving them a proposal and I like, I have a line item for training. I have yet to have a client like push back and say, no, I don't want that. You know, they may push back on like, I don't want research and discovery, or I don't want this, you know, 20,000 hours of design time. But they haven't, they haven't pushed back on this. So don't be afraid of doing that. Bill more for it. Um, your clients will, will actually thank you for it. 
So I've got a few resources for you. Um, the first one is actually a coworker of mine at Web Dev Studios, Chris Reynolds. He just made this post like five days ago, so it was like perfect timing for this talk. He actually goes through like making a screencast and like how to make it really, really well. And it's like, it is super in depth. It's a long post. Don't try to do it on your lunch break. Uh, you should probably like grab a coffee or maybe like a hard drink because it is pretty long. Um, but it is like, it's super good. And you know, you could, you could get away with doing like a really like, I'm just going to sit down and do these as fast as I can and I don't care how they look. But if you really put a little extra time into it and make them look good and uh, just make them look professional, I think that's going to make you look better as a business owner or as a freelancer. Um, I think that we should kind of strive to do that in whatever we do, like whatever we're handing off to clients, we should try to, try to you know, make it look as good as it can and, and be as helpful as it can. Now, I have had some people say that they, they just don't want to do screencasts. Like, they're like, that does not interest me at all. I'm not going to do it. You can't make me. And to those people, I'm like, that's fine. I can't force you to do anything. Um, so there, there are a couple options. iThemes, they have some like, free screencasts that are like introduction to WordPress and like how to do a post or whatever. Those are free. iThemes is a great company. I trust them. I use a lot of their plugins. Um, they, those are free. WP 101. Um, they have some really excellent uh, screencasts, and those are paid. I could not tell you how much it is, but it's like, you know, check out the URL. I think it's like maybe like a monthly fee of like $9 or something, but you know, if you're charging more for your sites, yeah, it makes up for that. <coughs> so kind of the, the last thing here is if the, if the client comes to you and they're like, look, I don't care how much you show me or how many videos I watch, I'm not going to do this. I'm not, I just, I know me, I'm not going to update the site, I'm not going to update plugins, I'm not going to do this. In those times, like, don't just, uh, don't just say, okay, whatever, you know, you're, it's your site, you can get hacked if you want. Like, really try to invest in them and in your relationship with them and say, well, you know, can I offer you a maintenance plan? Like, uh, you know, offer like a recurring billing kind of thing where you're like, okay, I'll go in and update your plugins, your themes, I'll make a backup, I'll make sure everything's working with the site properly. If that doesn't interest you, like if you think that's a headache, find someone else that will do that because there, I mean, there are companies that offer that service and there are other freelancers. So, you know, find someone to do that. Don't just like let them get hacked. And as kind of a bonus resource, I want, I want everybody to go buy this book. It's called You're My Favorite Client. I didn't write it. It's Mike Montero. I'm, I'm his fanboy. So it's, it's, a, it's not a WordPress specific book, but it is, it's about customer service uh, in, in web design businesses. And it's, that's where I think a lot of us lack uh, is the customer service department. And he really goes through like um, just how to, how to interact with a client um, from, from a really basic standpoint. Because we have all these sites like Clients from Hell. We've all seen those where we like, we like bitch about our, our stories like, yeah, this client made me like grab a logo out of a Word document. Like we can, we can do that and yeah, that is frustrating. But when it comes down to it, a client, like they go to a grocery store every day and they shop and they, they're used to that. They don't like get a website every day. They're not used to this. They don't know how to work with us. So this book really goes through like how the client should interact with you and how you should interact with the client. And he actually recommends like getting a copy for yourself and then getting a copy for the client and giving it to them at the start of a project. And it's like a pretty light read. And he's like a really funny author. So I thought I would throw it in and just say, you know, go check it out because it kind of, it kind of goes along with what I've been talking about here. And I think some of what Adam was talking about. So that is it for my very short presentation. Thank you for coming. I do, uh, there's like a lot of time for question and answers if anybody has any. Yeah, uh, you have a question? Yeah. So if a client, just say a client came in as a and they did break your site, and they come back to the fix, how do you approach that? Do you pitch that a big price, or do you still go ahead and fix it? Yeah, so the question was, um, you know, if, if you do this process, and the client does come back and say, hey, I'm sorry, I watched all your videos, but I still broke the site. What do you do? Um, do you offer like, okay, I'll do it for X amount? That that's personally, I think that's up to a lot of you to decide. I personally like, I've I've gotten over the whole freelance thing where I'm like, I'll just do it. I don't I don't deserve to get paid for this. <laughs> I like I swear to God, if I have to drive to their meeting, I charge them for my gas there. I I charge for everything. So I would say like, if that happens, 
you know, say I'm going to, um, I'll charge you X amount to fix it. Um, you know, you you had the videos, so you know you you had all the training, so it wasn't like I didn't train you and prepare you for it. So definitely, I would say charge them. Um, but I saw a couple other questions. Yeah. Yeah, it's Mike Montero, um, and he runs a uh, design agency in San Francisco. And they're like, they're like really cool, like one, kind of one of my heroes. Um, I think it's, it's actually called Mule Design. Um, but yeah, definitely, he's got a couple other books. He's got one called Design as a Job, and it actually like changed my freelance career because it like, it actually talks about getting you over that whole hurdle of like, I don't want to charge, or I don't want to, you know, charge too much. It, it, like the opening paragraph says, this book has a spine. After you read it, you will too. <laughs> like, I love that book. It actually changed my career. So go buy Design as a Job and go buy uh, You're My Favorite Client. Okay, you were saying that you would set up a, like a training site? Or yeah, so I, I set up a staging site. Yes, well, so actually what I do, and I would leave this up to you, like you can do whatever you want, but for me, I set up a staging site, and I put the theme there, and that's actually where I like push all my changes. Like I use GitHub for like version control, and so like I'm working on the theme, and when I get done with like a chunk of it, I just push it up to the site. And that's the site that the client's working on, and so it's, it's so everything's kind of in one place, and they can actually kind of see the site grow as you build it. And I haven't ran into any errors there, like since I've been doing it with this process. I mean, if you did, like you may want to just be like, okay, I'm just going to keep these two things separate. But I personally haven't ran into any issues with that. So, you know, maybe give it a try. Do clients ever like freak out or get upset or change something? So that actually happened the first time, the very first time that I started trying that process out. Like they were like, what happened? Like I was doing this thing and this page disappeared. So I actually, I started having a talk with them beforehand and I'm like, just so you know, I am going to be pushing changes up to this site so you will see some changes. If you're entering content, it's not going to disappear. It's in the database. If you have an issue where something disappeared, I can get it back for you, no problem. Um, so I just kind of warned them ahead of time, but I haven't had any issues since I've been warning them ahead of time. Uh, but again, if you do, like you may want to just separate it out. But I think we had another question back. Okay, cool. Well, um, we've got plenty of time. We can play a game or do more questions or <laughs> I, I'm s <clears throat> yeah, okay. Uh, I'm not playing that with you. I'm not playing anything with Adam. Um, yeah, sorry for this talk was so short. I was like thinking like I've been to like so many word camps and on the last day, like the last talk, it's like it goes right up to the hour and I'm like, man, i like my brain hurts from all this information. So I was like, I'm going to keep it short for you. Um, but if you have like any additional stuff like that I didn't cover, like just shoot me an email um, or actually just follow me on Twitter because that's where I'm like on all the time. Um, I am just at Bezier. I was, I wanted at Bezier, but like the Bezier curves, but it was taken. So I was too lazy and just added an ER onto the end of it. But yeah, um, any social media, Dribble, GitHub, that's, that's my username. Reach out to me, I'm pretty friendly, and we'll answer questions if, if I can. Yeah. Um, do you ever provide like, written documentation for your clients? And if you do, what's your Yeah, so um, that's a good question. She asked if I provide written documentation um, in addition to the videos. And I, I used to do that, but uh, I don't anymore. I just like, most of my clients were like, I don't read it. Like, cause I, I, did, I do like surveys with my clients a lot of times. Like I'll just send them a, a Google survey at the end of a project and ask them like various questions. And I was like, did you watch all the videos? Did you read all the stuff? And most of them are like, yeah, I watched all the videos. They were awesome. Did you read the stuff? No, I hate reading. So I, I don't do that anymore. But I mean, it, I mean, it could be a good bonus to include if you want to. Um, as long as they're like following along with the videos, I think that would be good. Yeah, yeah. Why is HostGator so bad? Why is HostGator so bad? It made me miss the birth of my first child. Did you not hear that? No. <laughs> Um, no, um, again, like I, I don't have a vendetta against like HostGator and GoDaddy, but I have had clients that were on these like sh cheap shared hosting environments and they, they had problems. When I got clients on WP Engine, Media Temple, Managed WordPress Hosting, they don't have the, as many problems. 
And for me, as like my job is to kind of like reduce their problems. And if I can if I can get them on a different host and they're going to have way less problems and better support, I'm going to do that. I'm definitely not forcing anybody to like drop HostGator if you're if you're using that currently. But you know, you may want to at least try. You know, try getting them on a on a different host. Have you had any like specific problems with them, or have you been have they, have they been really good to you? You're the client. Okay, you're the clients. All right. I think they do sponsor, but yeah, I mean, it, it really is just that, like, um, I used to use HostGator, and what was the, there's like one with the cow for a logo, it's like, I don't even remember, but I used to use those, and I, I started using Media Temple and WP Engine, and like, if I had a problem that I couldn't fix, like, the techs were so good about, like, I can open up a chat window and they're on with me within a minute and they're like, oh yeah, you just like, you did, you moved a file around and it's missing now, I'll put it back for you. It's like so, it's so easy and I love it and my clients uh, generally love it. So again, like I, I think it, I think of it this way, like you're, you know, a lot of us will spend $150 on a cell phone bill, but we won't spend like $10 more on hosting. So I'm like, this is like part of my business. Maybe I can like drop something else. Like I'll drop my morning coffee and I will get a better host. Cause you know, it is part of my business. But my issue with that is like I have GoDaddy and I, sometimes customer service has been a little bit Yeah. But I, the thought of the process to move, to move to, yeah. yeah, is like to me totally overwhelming. Well that, uh, do you have one side or multiple sites on them or do you have like a? Yeah, I mean, that, that can definitely be kind of a task. Um, I'm like super lazy and wouldn't want to do it, honestly, but <laughs> I mean, you could, I mean, you could always, um, so, so you, you don't, you're a client, right? You don't have, okay, so, you know, uh, I hate to say like wait until something bad happens, but. <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Yeah, I think it's like, does anyone know, like, I, I don't personally, like, pay for it anymore like my company does. It's like $29. I have Green Geeks for hosting, and I love them. Okay. Well, actually, that's interesting that she says that because I mentioned, like, two things, but there's, like, there's SiteGround and all kinds of hosts that are, like, offering way better customer sort, uh, service and better support. So, like, definitely, like, um, you know, do some research. That's pretty affordable. Uh, Digital Ocean, that's another really good one, and they're, they're cheaper than GoDaddy. Um, I don't know if they'll be that way forever, but you know. Yeah, that you do have to, yeah, good point, but. Um, you had a question in the back? Oh, okay, nice. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good question. She's asking about. She's asking about if if a client is already on hosting, do you? Um, and I guess this is if they do agree to switch. Do you provide that service? Um, for me, that is yes. Like I'll just I'll say, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna add this into the invoice. This is me. I'm going to switch your host for you, and it's gonna cost X amount. And usually they're like, they're fine with that. I've never had anyone be like, well, that's outrageous. You know, they, they understand, you know, I should get paid for like taking my time to move your site. Um, but yeah, good question. One, one thing I'd like to add to the hosting is that if you bundle that with support for their site, it's like that becomes recurring. Well, yeah, that's, uh, that's a good point. He mentioned that uh, bundling, like hosting the site for the client and adding support in. And when I actually owned a, I did a, I had a small agency for like a year. That's actually one of the things we did for recurring income. We had a support package and it was like, we'll host your site and we will support you and we'll update stuff for you. And it was like just X amount per month. 
And uh, we, had, we had quite a few clients that were like digging that idea. Um, I would say be careful about that. Make sure it's something you want to commit to because when you get like, it's, it's, it's kind of easy when you have like three clients, but then when you get up to like 30 clients, it can be a nightmare if like they all have problems at once and you're trying to work on like another project. So definitely make sure it's something you want to commit to. Um, but yeah, that can be a really good way to like create some recurring income and provide a really good service too. Talk server, sorry. All right, cool, thanks. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys.